Knock it off! Come on! Stop it! Stop scaring me, okay? I already did what you wanted me to. Come on! Oh, 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 oh man! Oh, fire ants! Oh, oh man, they're biting! Oh, come on, stop! Get off! Get off! Get off me! Oh, 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 the branches! They're moving! The branches are moving! Oh, no. The branches are moving! They're after me! Ah! Oh, no! Children and Journey to Magica. Well, I guess we're just calling it Magica for this. And uh, you lied to me. You told me I was chief cook and bottle washer. Well, that's that's in there too. <laughs> Let, let's do Journey to Magica first. Um, when uh, uh, when we produced the movie Journey to Magica, uh, it was created uh, with an international Asian audience in mind. We decided to do an, an American version of the movie and uh, do it a, then as a comic book, we realized that we wanted to do sort of a different story. Uh, take the elements that, that were in the movie, but essentially start from scratch. So I uh, should talk about how you went about that. Well, I thought we were hired because who knows more about Filipino folklore than David. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that. For me, it was more of thinking of it as um, a Saturday morning cartoon kind of approach to the ongoing series. So just taking the basic elements of the movie about a young boy finding his way in the world and just gradually adding like cast members and people for him to interact with and you know keep it light, but also have a serious undertone about you know there's a morality story there. It's him learning the, the responsibilities that he has to accept when he discovers Magicka. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a strange, mysterious land, but it's giving him many advantages that other children don't have. And so he has to understand that that's not something he can take lightly, and he has to be held to a higher, you know, level of accountability than his peers. And it's a, it's a tough challenge. I know you were handed this thing as, uh, uh, you did two versions of material for it. You wrote an outline for what would be the second movie, right. which is several years down, down the road, road, and then we came back and said, all right, let's look at it if it would be, say, a TV series. Yeah, ongoing, rather. Yeah, I took it as like two distinct, you got a movie and a movie, and I just, like I said, I moved it very much into yeah. the future, and my movie treatment was fairly grim. It was a little bit darker. Um, but I, I loved having that. Because, because something, nothing says Lucky Charms like dark and grim. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it was interesting to see because that gave us uh, uh, two tent poles there. This is the first movie. This is where you could conceivably go for a second movie. Then you did the outline of the stuff in between, and I kind of like it that way. So if the first movie does well and folks like the comic, we, uh, I could see going to the second movie and then going with your story. I don't like to focus too much on the movie making aspect and the, the potential of things like that because an awful lot of people are out there trying to treat 
their comic book graphic novel idea as a storyboard. And, of course, I would love for somebody from Hollywood to come and hand me a million dollar check, but I don't believe that you get there by tailoring what you do in an ongoing comic book property series to a movie. I think that if you ever get to that point, you get there by month in and month out telling the best damn stories that you can, the most entertaining stories that you can, with the best artwork that you can, that are suited to the format and the media that you're working in. There's a big difference between a 14-page or a 20-page comic book story and even a 200-page graphic novel. You can't treat one like the other, or all you have is an incomplete snippet of a movie every month. Every story, to some degree, has a beginning, a middle, an end, has to build to some kind of climax or a crescendo. You can't just be a random, a 10-minute slice of the movie storyboard. You have to have something that entertains you in and of itself. I'm not saying that it's the silver age of comic books and Superman has a problem on page two that's solved on page eight and everything goes back to normal. Of course, there's continuing stories, continuing adventures, ongoing storylines, but there has to be something in each individual episode that makes it an episode.